Father God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Well, the word of, uh, the scripture of our Lord says that these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And I want to open up an illustration today that I'm going to use later at our, at our late service out of the ballpark that speaks about a baseball game between God and Satan. Okay, and I want you to imagine that you're watching this game. You're sitting in the stands, you're observing this baseball game today, and uh, you, you have God's team and you have Satan's team. And you've been watching the game all along, and now you're getting to the point in the game where the things are really starting to, to heat up. The game's been played well on both sides to this point, but the score's tied, and the game is going into the bottom of the ninth inning. Now, God's team is due up to hit, and if they score just one run, the game is over. They have a chance to win the game. Well, the first couple batters come up in the inning, and they fail to deliver. There are quickly two outs, and nobody's still on base. God even knows Satan to this point has been playing his best game, but what God also knows is that he has some spare weapons that he's going to be using off the bench. So God summons the first of his bench players to the on-deck circle and then ultimately out to the plate. And with two outs, this player named Love steps up to the plate. And Love, well, he takes that first pitch, swings at it, and, and of course ropes a single right back up the middle. Because after all, Love never fails, right? So God then uses another pinch hitter named Faith to hit next. And Faith takes a swing at the first pitch, lines a double into the alley because Faith works with Love. So you've got second and third, nobody, or two out, second and third. They need just one run. So God uses another pinch hitter to the plate. And this pinch hitter happens to be named Hope. Well, Satan winds up and throws that first pitch. And all Hope is doing is hoping that he would be able to swing at that pitch, but he has to let it go by. Three more pitches are thrown. Three more pitches go by. Hope just wishing that he could have gotten on base some other way. But of course, what Hope knows is he's not going to swing at anything that Satan throws that isn't worth hitting. So he walks to first base. And so the scene is set. Tie game, bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, still two outs. God has one more weapon on his bench to use. And it happens to be his star player, a player named Grace. <coughs> Grace surely doesn't look like one of the best, most fittest ball players. But Grace settles into that batter's box, waits patiently for that next pitch. Quickly, the count becomes three and two. The suspense is building. The next pitch will likely be the pitch that ends the game. And Satan rears back. He gives everything he has left. He throws that pitch with as much speed, with as much spin as he possibly can. And suddenly there is the loud crack of the bat. And the ball is launched out to the deepest part of the ballpark. Satan's not worried. His center fielder is his star player. He's running right at the wall as the ball's coming right to the wall. The player leaps at the wall, comes down, empty hand. You, along with every other spectator, begins to go wild. As you know, the ball has now gone over the wall, cleared the fence for a walk-off, grand slam, home run. God's team stays unbeaten. Satan and his team come up short once again. And all you can do at that moment is just sit in your seat with the biggest smile smeared all over your face. And God walks up to you and he sits down right there beside you and he asks you this question. Why do you think that love, faith, and hope had no problem getting on base but simply couldn't win the game? All you have to say to that is, I don't quite know. And that's when God explains to you. If love and faith and hope had won the game, you would think they could have done it all by themselves. But the fact is that while love, faith, and hope can deliver and get on base, it is only by my grace that you get home safely and win the game. It is only by my grace that you get home safely and win the game. And oh yeah, by the way, I want to let you know that your days of watching my team play are over. Here is a jersey with your name on it, and now I want you to be a part of my team. You know, God says in his word in Ephesians 2, for it is by grace, through faith, we have been saved. And it is not from ourselves. It is not something that we can boast of. It is a gift given by God, not by our own works. For we are all of God's workmanship. 
We're created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And that is what God prepares us in advance to do. This morning you heard in our gospel reading, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And you know the scriptures say that each one of us are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. So today we gather here in our church for our early service, and we take our church outside of our doors for our late service, and we go into the community. And I believe God wants to have a personal conversation with each one of us, no matter where we are in our walk with him. Each one of us may be at different stages. You may be feeling today, getting up out of your bed and going about your day, you are one of the Lord's most devoted disciples, deeply involved, active in your faith community, active in your life of faith. Others may be getting up and feeling they're being used in some areas, unused in other areas. And still there are others who get up on this morning and they consider themselves to be so far apart from God, so distanced from Him, that they don't even feel like they would be a part of His team or that God would even want them. And no matter where each person is, we can know this and take this to heart. Wherever each person is today, God's grace, God's grace is sufficient for everyone. So as pastor of Grace Lutheran, I believe God's calling you and I to encourage people in our own walks of life, in our own areas of discipleship, and today may just be the start of something great in your life. God is handing you that jersey with your name on it, and he wants you to be an active part of his team. And I believe Grace can be a place where our local community can see God's faith and love and hope lived out in action. I live for days and opportunities like this where God can speak through his servants, where God can reassure us of the connection that we have with him. Grace Lutheran can be a place where those in our community can be connected to our faith community and where they can see God's grace being lived out in action. We exist today as a church for so much more than to come in here to God's house of worship for one hour this morning or to even go outside and have a social fellowship gathering, a good meal, and a hearty baseball game if the Rangers actually play up to their potential. <laughs> but what God gives you in Jesus, well, it's, it's all that matters. And I want you to make no mistake about it. God is calling you to be a part of his team. He wants to have an ongoing relationship with you and all those we come into contact with this afternoon. Now, I'm ever so thankful that we have such a great turnout. Over 200 people plan to come for our tailgate this afternoon. And I'm so eagerly desire to connect with some of these guests that people are bringing on a deeper level that who may want to become involved with our faith community. And you may also, in your walk of life, have people who are so eagerly wanting to be connected to a faith community. And God may be placing them right there in your life. We do have some exciting endeavors coming up here at Grace in these next summer months. Events that your entire family and families that can be, uh, of your friends, of your coworkers, of your community, of your schools can be a part of. Because see, I believe God's given our faith community here at Grace Lutheran a unique opportunity today. And that opportunity is to be a church that goes outside of its walls. That opportunity is to be a church that goes out into the community with one unified mission to speak the saving love of Jesus Christ first and foremost, and then also to just watch the Holy Spirit stir up some excitement in the hearts of those who want and seek to follow him. The church so often seems to be disconnected from the community around it when it stays inside of its walls. But we at Grace don't want to be confined within our walls. We want God's love to, to spill out to spill out in the lives of our families and our friends and our other earthly relationships. I want to thank each of you for being a part of coming to God's house of worship this morning for our early service and our communion service. And I want to thank each of you who are here today that will be following us to the ballpark after this hour of worship is over. For I pray that God will connect with people this afternoon and I pray that God will also connect with people in your life and your influence this next week that may cause them to just reflect on how vital of a member they can be and they are through God's eyes on his team. For we know God's grace is always here for you. And this faith community called grace that you and I are a part of, we want others to experience the greatest gifts that have been given. Salvation in Jesus alone. 
grace that comes through Jesus alone. Forgiveness in Jesus alone. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be your witnesses. To share your faith, to share your love, to share your hope. To be faithful, to be loving, to be hopeful in the midst of all circumstances. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity today that we as Grace Lutheran have to extend the walls of our church, to walk outside of our walls into our local community, into a public setting, and to not go displaying God's love and his hope and, and the faith that you've blessed us with, with words of hatred and words of retribution and words of the end is near and repentance is needed. For Lord, we know that. We know that repentance is needed. But Lord, we also know that the message of grace shines all the more. We know that faith, hope, and love are important in our daily walk and our discipleship with you. But we know that without grace, we wouldn't be brought safely home. And so, Father, I pray that your grace would be upon us, your grace would be magnified in us, and your grace would be showered upon all who come to worship with us, both here in this hour and in the hours and days, weeks, and years to come. For this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.